Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, December 23rd, 2021, and today we're going to be taking a look at the state of South Carolina and this brand new proposal by the State House, Republican-controlled, made for Republicans. This map itself, both of which that have been proposed, an alternative version and the initial version, and we will talk about this initial version primarily because it seems to be a targeted slash concerted effort at making Representative Nancy Mace in a more competitive district entering into the 2022 midterm election year. And there might be a lot of reasons as to why that actually might be. But at the end of the day, we're going to talk about South Carolina's maps and the difference between the state house and the state Senate proposal. They actually have two state house proposals, as I mentioned, and also just talking about the impact of President Trump on this specific race and what some of the results were previously in these competitive districts, more so a competitive district. So taking a look at the old map, let's go ahead and see if we can pull it up here. Uh, the old map in the state of South Carolina allowed for four solid Republican districts, uh, five solid Republican districts, my fault, uh, five solid Republican districts and one additional safe Democratic district. Now, at that point in time, um, in the 2018 midterm elections, nobody really thought a bunch of these races were going to be competitive. But in South Carolina, there was a competitive race that is rated currently as Republican plus 14, meaning it's 14 points more Republican than the rest of the nation. Knowing this, the Democratic Party still vied for one of these seats with Representative, or at the time, just Joe Cunningham. And he defeated uh, Katie Arrington. And I believe this race actually was known for having a specific primary challenger in which Joe Cunningham was running against someone who had ousted the representative who was currently representing South Carolina's first congressional district. And that was the whole interesting thing about South Carolina's uh, first district. It was a very competitive race, but it could have had the factor of the incumbency, but ultimately it didn't. There was uh, Mark Stanford, I, be I believe, was the incumbent at the time. He ended up losing in this specific district and did not return in 2020. Uh, but looking at the district itself, Joe Cunningham was able to defeat the Republican opponent despite this district currently being rated as 14 points more Republican than the rest of the nation. So obviously, with the power that the South Carolina Republican Party has, their next idea and their next step is to cut out any competitive nature of a singular district in the state of South Carolina. Originally, this district was never meant to be competitive. If you take a look at years past in the state of South Carolina, it had always remained a Democratic district, and there was a reason for that. Uh, sorry, a, a Republican district, and there was a reason for that. In 2012, there were some competitive races in the 5th and the 7th districts, but by the time we reached 2014, by the time we reached 2016, and even 2018, these races weren't competitive. The only time that the 5th Congressional District was actually competitive was when Ralph, Norther Ralph Norman faced off against uh, uh, Parnell in this uh, competitive race back in April, I believe, or maybe June. I think it might have been the June runoff, the June special election that nobody was focusing on. Everyone was focusing on Georgia's 6th District, and the 5th District actually got more competitive. Now, the interesting thing is, that looking at the uh, the reason why some of these districts are more close, um, well, first of all, that was an older map, but this is the newer map. Uh, in, in the newer map, in 2012, there was a very good showing of support for the Democratic Party and just Barack Obama across the state of uh, South Carolina. Let's see if we can find individually the, uh, the race itself and just look at the uh, popular vote across the state. And it was a pretty large margin and it was 15 points. The Republicans gained an electoral, uh, gained a seat in the House of Representatives because South Carolina increased in terms of total representation. But the point is that there were still two competitive districts at that point in time, and now there simply are none. And that's what the Republican Party has been trying to ensure. But they have two districts here, the second district, which was decided by 13 points, and the first district, which was decided by just 1.3%. So, of course, their job is to make the districts more uh, Republican. And you can see this clearly in the alternative house map. You can see that the first district has turned into a Republican plus 17 district. You can also see that in the state Senate map, the first district has turned into a Republican plus 18 district. But there's something interesting about the state house proposal that makes it so in this new map, there is one majority black district, and that is the sixth congressional district. James Clyburn stays in the same district. But the first district actually gets, get this, more pro-Democrat. 
it becomes a partisan lean district of Republican plus 10. On the old map, it was Republican plus 14. And if Nancy Mace, as the incumbent in South Carolina, and at the time was not the incumbent, but was still running against Joe Cunningham, she defeated Joe Cunningham by a margin of 1.3%. Well, of course, reducing the congressional district by four points to the left means this district will be more competitive. And that's what you start to see in South Carolina. Uh, that's where you start to see this intentional targeting of Nancy Mace as a representative, because it doesn't make any type of sense, electorally speaking, to make this district more competitive. You have the means of making the districts very solid for the GOP. So why don't you do it? This might be retaliation against Nancy Mays. This might be an intentional targeting because President Trump is calling on uh, primary challengers to Nancy Mays. If they can't get her through a primary, potentially, wouldn't they rather have a Democrat? Maybe that's their way of thinking. I honestly don't know how at all this makes any type of sense because it is a complete oversight to assume that there isn't enough Trump support in this first district to primary Nancy Mace in the first place. But that isn't my job. I am not the one drawing these maps. And if they want to make it more competitive based off of some type of vendetta against Nancy Mace, then they can do that. And that's the way it works. Electorally, it doesn't make any type of sense. They've already gerrymandered the rest of the state. So why make this district more competitive? Who knows, right? And I think that's partially why you've seen this alternative map draw. I think that's why you see this uh, idea because the original map that was proposed by the state house was meant to be used for a compromise between the state house and the state senate. But ultimately, now they are giving an alternative proposal, I think primarily to make it so, it's very clear that their efforts are not to undermine Republican future victories, but more so to target individually Nancy Mace. And I think that's what the original plan at least was proposed to do. Otherwise, it really just doesn't make any sense. It might be there, you know, for whatever reason, just simply to make the districts more competitive. But I think I'm giving the Republican Party a bit too much, uh, a bit too much credit when it comes down to that, because they haven't done that in any other state. Both political parties have been very clear with their intentions during this campaign season, during this uh, redistricting cycle, and everything that they do is meant to be advancing their own political party because a lot of them are worried about 2022 and potentially competitive districts and potentially Republican or Democratic victories. Now, South Carolina's map has been gerrymandered for quite some time now. That's no secret. Looking at the current delegation, the Democratic Party back in the 2020 House elections was able to win 43% of the vote across the state of South Carolina and Republicans won 56%. Now, that is a huge margin for the GOP. You're talking nearly 14 points between the two. But at the same time, the representation here just doesn't add up. There is one Democratic representative from South Carolina and six Republicans. That one Democratic representative gives the Democrats 14% in terms of total representation across the state itself. So knowing that, knowing that there is just 14% representation and the Democrats are getting 43% in terms of overall popular vote, you know that the South Carolina maps are already gerrymandered. But that doesn't matter because that's the way that American politics works. And in this first district, it would be completely you know, uh, naive for the GOP to make it more competitive out of this idea that either one, they could primary Nancy Mace and win that election later down the line with a more competitive district because newsflash, probably not. I think that you will start to see Joe Cunningham return to that district sometimes, I guess, periodically over the next 10 years because it makes sense. It's politically convenient, right? If it's more competitive, if it's more pro-Democrat, why not run when you lost by just a percentage point as an incumbent representative? A lot of people want to return to the House of Representatives. And if there is a Republican president at some point in time, there's nothing stopping some type of anti-Republican midterm wave year from propping up a Joe Cunningham or someone of a similar uh, stature to this individual House seat, right? So looking at the next steps or what this means for the GOP electorally, it just doesn't make any type of sense. The state Senate map, I think definitely is the uh, map that makes the most sense for the Republican Party. It solidifies all of their districts. If you take a look at the current standing of all of these congressional districts, they are uh, pretty good in the older map, but of course, one of them is competitive. And now it removes the competitive nature of the first district. It also solidifies this second district, which was Republican plus 19, which arguably is 
very solid, but still came down to be a 13 point margin. So you're seeing about a six point disconnect there. Now it's Republican plus 20, just slightly more Republican means it can move over into the safe column because all that was preventing this from moving over to the safe column was a matter of 2%. If it's a red wave year, in addition to the district becoming more Republican, I have no doubt in my mind that this district could become a safe congressional district for the GOP. But the point is that this new map, this state Senate map would make first the first district four points more Republican, which I think would definitely be calming to Nancy Mace and many other Republicans that are eyeing up this seat because she does have some primary challengers. I mean, if you look at the first district here, there are some people that are choosing to run against her. No top names yet. Donald Trump has said he would endorse some type of opponent to him, uh, to her, uh, but we will see what happens. I don't think that he has even uh, thought about a decision there because there are no notable names that could actually ride on name recognition in addition to a Trump endorsement, but I think that's something Something that uh, has yet to be seen. But just looking at the uh, next steps or with this South Carolina Senate map or even the alternative House proposal, both of these, I think, benefits the GOP in a way that they uh, were needed to be benefited by. Or at least if you're looking at this from the lens of gerrymandering and looking at this from the lens of how do I make this map more unfair but more solid for the incumbent party, you go with one of the two maps. You do not go with this other House draft because it just simply doesn't make sense. I think that while there may be some type of intentional targeting here for Nancy Mace that people need to get over it because at the end of the day making a district less positive for your party to spite someone of your own party someone that could be easily primaried through a Trump endorsement of their opponent through Trump's involvement direct involvement I mean you're going to need him down there because the first district does seem to like Nancy Mace but then again they like Donald Trump more I think that you're going to see the uh you are going to see President Trump's involvement, at least amongst the Republican side, you know, talking about the general election. I think the first district is a little bit at odds with President Trump, but that doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, all that matters for Nancy Mace's uh, future bid is simply just Republican votes and who wants who on the Republican side. And if she can't get them, if she cannot win the Republican voters in South Carolina's first district, she's done for because this district is already prone to having primary challengers and primary winners on the uh, for the Republican side. And I think Nancy Mace is definitely the next one to go. And Republicans don't need to use the avenue of having some type of more competitive district to do so. I think that this was really just some type of uh, scare tactic or last ditch effort to make the first district more Democratic simply to worry Nancy Mace, something that was meant to be uh, a sign that says we don't want you here anymore, right? The South Carolina Republicans are telling her a very clear message through this map. And if they actually were to pass this map. I think Democrats around the country, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Cunningham, whoever it might be, are going to be happy about this new map because it makes it more likely that a Democrat does win here in the future. But then again, I mean, you're still looking at a district that is Republican plus 10. So maybe it was some type of innocent oversight by the Republican Party and not at all an intentional targeting by uh, for Nancy Mace. But you are talking about tens of Republicans working on this together, getting insight from people outside, paying people to draw these maps, uh, proposing them and putting them forth, and no one brought up the possibility that the first district might be more competitive? No, this is entirely intentional. And if it was not intentional, then that is a complete mis- uh, or complete oversight by the South Carolina Republican Party and competency at its finest if they were to actually pass this map because the intentions are clear. They are not trying to make this map more representative of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or South Carolina's state composition. More so, they are trying to draw a map intentionally to benefit the GOP. That is very clear and it has been very clear from the start. The Republicans are drawing maps by and for themselves. And for this first district, I think the main takeaway is this shows just how ingrained and how deeply rooted this distrust and this dislike for Nancy Mace is in South Carolina. She has been too outspoken. She has been at odds with some of the GOP's favorite people at this point in time, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert. When you're at odds with these top people and you already have President Trump urging other Republicans, good and smart South Carolina Republicans, to run against you in a primary, you know that your time is up within your own party, specifically within the GOP. You have seen too much opposition to survive your next primary. So the next step is if you might not be able to be primaried in the eyes of the incumbent party, they might draw you into a more competitive district. But I can tell you now, I think the Republican Party would be much happy, much happier with Nancy Mace, with that 
five to one majority in South Carolina, a uh, six to one majority than they would be with a five to two majority. Having an additional Democrat in a district that was completely preventable simply to spite a one term, looks like it, one term representative, who knows, right? I think that's a map that will would not be at all smart for the South Carolina Republican Party, but they definitely seem to be considering it for a reason. And it's not off of some type of oversight of a misunderstanding about the competitive nature. The first district has been a target by the Arizona Republican Party, by the, I don't know why I said Arizona, the South Carolina Republican Party, since it was won by Joe Cunningham in 2018. And to see it here now proposed in a map from the state house that's more competitive, questions their intentions. And I think that they seem are they seem to be very clear at this point in time, uh, specifically targeting Nancy Mace as an incumbent Republican. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my redistricting election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.